What's going on guys? In this video, I want to start documenting my progress in, in doing Kaggle challenges. And uh, I, I thought I would step through how to do your first um, sort of Kaggle challenge. And we will start with an easy one in the Titanic Kaggle challenge. So uh, we're not going to do anything very complicated. This is sort of for those who are just wanting to get started doing Kaggles. So what you wanna do first is uh, you want to Google Kaggle Titanic and then what we will look for is the data first of all or yeah so we'll look at the data and first of all they have some sort of overview where you have a training set and a test set so um, so you know obviously we want to uh, train a, a classifier on the training set and then we want to compute the predictions on the test set. And then we want to submit those predictions we've made. And then we will obtain a score of, of how good our classifier was. Um, so for the data, there are some information here where uh, sort of the idea is to predict if the passenger survived or, or not. And then we have some information like the, the ticket, uh, the, sort of the passenger ticket class, um, the gender, uh, the age, uh, yeah, and so, some other information as well. And so what you will do is you will go down here to this where you have the data and then at the bottom here you should have download. So you will download those files. And when you have downloaded those, it will look something like this, where we will have our train set, our test and a submission CSV file. So what the idea is, well, first of all, if you look at the training, it's going to look like this where we have uh, all of the information that was uh, that we just looked at. And here you can see things like there's a missing value here. So there's not a number in that one and similar for the cabin and so on. So we might, you know, we already know that we're going to have to do some data cleaning to to be able to use this. All right. And then it's similar for the test set, although we don't have the one if they actually if they survived or not. And the idea is then to make a submission file where we have the passenger IDs and our, our goal is to compute this submission right here. Uh, now this is already, I've already done this. So uh, these are already filled in, but obviously these would be, you know, th these are not uh, given, right? So, so, all right, let's take a look at how we can train a classifier and compute some predictions. And then lastly, how we actually and also how we do our first submission in Kaggle. All right, so here I just have a, an empty Jupyter notebook. And the reason why I like Jupyter, or I, I should say I'm kind of not used to using Jupyter that much, but what I like about it is uh, when you're sort of cleaning data and uh, stuff, stuff like that, you want to be able to interactively look at what you're doing. And for that, I think notebooks are pretty good. Um, so. I think how I'm going to structure things are that I'm going to look at data, I mean, for more serious Kaggle challenges is that I, I clean and look at the data in Jupyter, but then I create a model and so on yeah, just normally. But anyways, so what we'll do is we'll import pandas as PD. Um, and the first thing we want to do is we want to load our data. So data pd.readcsv, train.csv. And let's do the same thing for the test. So we have the test like that. And then we could maybe do data head of five. And now we can see the exact same thing that we did in the, in the Excel file or same CSV file, um, where we have passenger ID, survive, um, the class of the, of the passenger and so on. So what we want to do, first of all, is we want to be, be able to use this. So we want need to be able to clean this. So let's uh, create a clean function. And the clean will take in some data. And I'm actually going to do something that is not very good for in terms of getting a good score, but that will simplify a bunch of things. So I'm going to actually do dot drop. And we're going to drop, first of all, the, the, the ticket right here. I don't think this gives too much information. Perhaps, um, I haven't taken a look at this in detail, but from I, I don't think there's a lot of information to be gained from the ticket. And it would be kind of annoying to, to 
sort of convert these into categorical variables. So let's just get rid of that one. Uh, let's also get rid of the cabin. Uh, I think, so most of them are not a numbers. Uh, that's why I'm getting rid of it. But there are actually some information sort of um, in the section that they were located in the ship. So I think that information could be useful. And what you would do then is you would convert this not a number to an unknown or something like that. And then just have the the character of where they were located and then convert those to to um, to numerical uh, category. But let's just make, you know, let's keep things simple. This is our first Kaggle challenge. So what we're going to do then is we'll get rid of the name as well. And so also here's might be some information uh, where, you know, some are doctors, for example, and some are sort of a royalty uh, title and stuff like that, which could impact um, perhaps. So there are there is information here probably, but again, let's just get rid of it. And then passenger ID, um, you know, this is definitely not something that, you know, is going to have an impact. All right, and what we want to do now is we want to go through the sort of the rest of the columns or the ones that have not a number in them. So let's go through the um, the sib sp, which is if they had a sibling or a spouse uh, on the on the ship, and then let's do parch, which I think is if they had children or parents perhaps, um, and then we'll do fair. And we'll also do age. So what we will do now is we'll just go through those columns. So for call in columns, and we will do data of column dot fill and a. So the idea here is that some of these values will have not a number. What we want to do is just sort of uh, convert those. And here you have many different options. Perhaps you would want to introduce for. So perhaps you would want to introduce a, an unknown token. Uh, and then, you know, have a specific one for that. Uh, but for some of these, you know, it might be difficult because for age, for example, it's a continuous variable. And so one thing that could be easier here is um, to fill in th those missing values with a with a mean of the of the ages. Of course, you know, you can al already think that, you know, that's kind of a, an easy way to solve that problem. And there are better ways for sure to do that. And one thing you could look at is, for example, uh, what the what the ticket was for that person. So for example, you could have an idea that the first class tickets were mostly to people that were older, and which, is, which happens to be the case. I've looked at the data a little bit. But so you could use that information as well as or sort of if they were, you know, if they were married or not, and if they were a doctor and, and all that stuff. And then you could uh, make a better prediction of, of the actual age of that person. Um, anyway, ho hopefully I'm not confusing you here. But what we're going to do is we're just going to take out data of column and then we'll do, just do median. So you could as well do mean here. Um, but let's just, let's just do median. And then uh, we'll do in place equals true. All right. So now we've converted all of those. Um, missing values. One thing I'm going to do as well is do data dot embarked dot fill na with u. So u here is for so the embarked here is have three I think s c and q, which were different locations uh, for where they sort of embarked on on Titanic. And uh, I think so one location was in Ireland, one was in France. Um, and there are some missing data points here. So the idea is to just to fill those with an unknown token. All right, and then we just want to return data. All right, so now let's do data equals clean of data uh, test equals clean of test. All right, and that didn't work. Yeah, I think that we might have to do access equals one here. So that works. Um, so axis one is for the columns. Then let's do data ahead of five, maybe. And now we can see that uh, the data, you know, is a lot smaller and uh, the not numbers are filled. And we've dropped some. So, so one thing we have to do now is convert these strings right here 
to actual values, right? So perhaps we can consider that we have a mapping of male to an integer of, of zero, female to an integer of one, and similarly for the emba embarked column. So what, what we will use for that is um, sklearn. Um, you know, this isn't too difficult to do manually, but uh, we can do from sklearn import preprocessing. And we'll do a label encoder. We'll just call it le um, preprocessing dot label encoder, and we'll specify the column that we want to use this label encoder on. So the columns will be uh, for sex and then embarked. So we'll do for call in columns. Uh, we'll do the data of that particular column is uh, label encoder dot fit transform of data of column. All right, so that will do that mapping for us. Um, and sort of we'll see exactly how that looks like. Then we'll do a test column is le dot transform of test column. So I think here what we're doing is we're doing a, a fit and a transform at the same time on the data. And then we're using that, that fitted transform on, on the training data to just transform the test set. And we could get stuff like le dot classes um, to take a look at how exactly they converted those classes to integer. All right, and then in the end, we can do data dot head of five. Oh uh, yeah, so for call in columns. And now what we get is that, for example, for the gender, uh, we can see that the first one is female. So female is mapped to a integer of zero. No, yeah, of zero. And then male is mapped to one. And similarly, C, zero, Q, one, S, two, U, three. So, you know, you can obviously imagine that you, you can create a dictionary and have a reverse mapping and, and, and things like that. All right, so now that we actually have the data um, clean, so everything should be good to go now. Let's do from sklearn.linear model import logistic regression. And you could try out different things here. Uh, you could do maybe a linear regression. Maybe you can do um, K nearest neighbor, decision trees. Um, I haven't really experimented too much here. Um, so, but logistic regression seems to be a natural thing to use here. Um, but we'll do from sklearn.model selection import train test split. So, you know, we want to obviously have a validation set um, to, to see how, how good it is. So we'll do uh, a train test split, but first we need to have X and Y values. So we'll do Y is serve, uh, data of survived. And then we need to drop that column, obviously, so, uh, for, the, for the input. So data.drop of survived and then access one. So now for the, the, the sort of split, we'll do X train, X validation, uh, Y train, Y validation is train test split of X, Y. We can specify test size, maybe 0.2. And then we can specify random state as well, um, ensuring that you will probably obtain the same results as I do. All right, so for the classifier, CLF, we'll do a logistic regression um, we can specify random state here as well. I'm not entirely sure what the random state is for the logistic regression, but um, there are probably some randomness involved. But then we'll do a maximum number of iterations, so number of update steps. We'll do dot fit on X train and Y train, right? So that will train it. And it goes pretty quickly. So then we'll do predictions is clf.predict on our validation set. So why we want this is, you know, we want to know how good it is on the validation data that it hasn't seen. So to get the accuracy, we can do from sklearn.metrics import accuracy score. And then we can do accuracy score of yval and then predictions. You can see 81%. And uh, yeah, that is all right, I guess. We can see what we get on the test set when we do our submission. So we'll do submission uh, predictions is clf.predict on the test set. Then um, 
you know, we want to create a CSV file that we can actually upload to Kaggle. And this isn't too difficult. We'll just create a data frame. So pd.data frame. And we'll specify that the first axis should be passenger ID. And we need to also create those here. So test IDs is test of passenger ID. So now that we have the passenger ID, ID, uh, IDs there, we can do test IDs dot values. All right. And then for the second axis, uh, we want to have survived. So that will be the submission predictions. All right. So that's it. Yeah, we need to, um, you know, restart the kernel and run everything. But the last step will be data frame dot two s CSV. Let's just call it submission dot CSV and then index equals false. So I'm going to restart and run all and it's done. So let's get that CSV file. All right. So I just put that on the desktop. So that is our submission file. We can just quickly check that it looks all right. Um, and here we can see that it's in the correct format that they wanted in. So passenger ID and then survived or not. All right. So now we can go back to our Kaggle thing, all right, the Kaggle page, we'll do submit predictions. And what you will do um, is you'll just drag the CSV file over here, it will upload that CSV file. And then when it's done, let's see. So when it's done, we, we can just create make submission right there. And then we obtain a score right here. All right, so I think this means, I think the score here signifies the accuracy we obtained on the test set. So this is a, lot, a little bit worse than we got on the validation data, but uh, yeah, 76%. So what we can do is then we can check some kind of a public leaderboard. And yeah, I don't know, I think it says, yeah, categorization accuracy. So some people have got 100%. Uh, I think they have cheated or something because I don't think it's possible to have 100%, but maybe it is, I don't know. And then, you know, we can scroll down and yeah, we can see where we, have, yeah. So when I, um, previously I had 79%, but I used uh, a little bit more complicated things, but yeah, we can see that we got 76 and I think, yeah, I'm not really sure how good 76% is. Um, but considering that we dropped a lot of different categories, um, you can, you know, that, that is pretty okay, I would say. And we didn't use a very complicated model. So there are definitely things you can improve here and you can probably obtain a pretty, uh, a better score. All right. So that was the sort of the first Kaggle challenge. Uh, I will continue making these videos, I think, and just sort of document my, my, my progression and, and the challenges I'm doing. All right. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope to see you in the next one.